So now let's start off with server side encryption. So server side encryption is the encryption of data at its destination by the application or the service that receives it. So it's like keeping your data secure after transit or at the server side. So the first one we need to discuss is server side encryption with AWS S3 managed keys or SSE S3. So when you use server side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys or SSE S3, each object is encrypted with a unique key. So for extra security here, S3 actually encrypts the key itself with a master key that it regularly rotates. Rotate means it changes periodically and using that master key, it again encrypts the unique key as well. And when it comes to encryption, it uses 256 advanced encryption standards, AES 256 to encrypt your data. The most important thing here is you must include XAMZ server side encryption header to request server side encryption. But you can enable that in the console as well that I told you. So I hope you got the gist of it. Let's move on. And the second one is server side encryption that is server side encryption with customer master keys stored in AWS key management service. So that is one thing that we are delighted to hear about, isn't it? Because we have just now discussed how KMS works. So when you use server side encryption with AWS KMS or SSE KMS, you can use the default AWS managed CMK or you can specify a customer managed CMK that you already created. But don't worry if you do not specify a customer managed CMK, S3 automatically creates an AWS managed CMK in your AWS account. And if you want to use a customer managed CMK for SSE KMS, you can create the CMK before you configure SSE KMS. So what happens here is you have the object when you send it to AWS S3, every object is encrypted using the AWS managed KMS and that gets stored as an encrypted object on the S3 itself. And here there are a few points that have been mentioned. So AWS KMS encrypts only the object data. Any object metadata is not encrypted and you should always include S3 colon X hyphen AMZ server side encryption colon AWS KMS or the ARN that you have. And when you upload an object, you can specify the AWS KMS CMK using the AWS AMZ server side encryption hyphen AWS KMS key ID header. So key ID will basically be your CMK ID so that you can pass it as a header. And the third one is server side encryption with customer provided keys or SSEC. So with server side encryption with customer provided keys or SSEC, you manage the encryption keys and Amazon S3 manages the encryption. So that's the difference here with the above two as you are in charge of managing the encryption keys and AWS manages the encryption. AWS writes to disks using the encrypted data key that you have and decrypts using the same key when you access your object. So once again, server side encryption with customer provided encryption allows you to set your own encryption keys. So if you think AWS stores it, it does not. Amazon S3 does not store the encryption key you provide. Instead, it stores a randomly salted HMAC value of the encryption key to validate the future requests. If you aren't sure about HMAC, just you need to remember that HMAC or hash message authentication code is a computed signature which you might send along with the data or the portion of the data and this will help you to authenticate that the data has not been altered or replaced. So if you see here, we have the client and it has the client managed data key and we send it along with the object and it basically encrypts it and stores it as a part of the encrypted object. Now let's talk about the client side encryption using service S3. So we have discussed enough about client side encryption. Having said that client side encryption, as we know, is the act of encrypting data before sending it to Amazon S3. So the protection that you provide is for the data at rest or before storing it in S3. But to enable client side encryption, you have to give the following options. So you use a customer master key stored in AWS key management service. You use a master key that you store within your application. So now see the diagram and imagine the data that you have is at the client side that you have here. And if you want to encrypt it before storing it on S3, so you'll need a key to encrypt and a key to decrypt, isn't it? So let's see how the encryption works here. So this is the encryption part that we'll be discussing. So you have the object here. It can be a text file or a log file. So we create a randomly generated plain text data key using the data key generated using the CMK, which is then used to encrypt the object data. That is part one. So this is the part one. So the second part will be where along with the encrypted data that we have here, we need to provide the encrypted data key so that it can be decrypted. At this point, 
the encrypted data key and the encrypted data object is sent from the client to the S3 for storage. S3 then takes the encrypted data key and associates it with the encrypted object and stores both in S3. So this is something that S3 stores. So encrypted data and the encrypted data key. So now that we have looked at the encryption, now let's see how the decryption works. So just like in encryption, we sent the encrypted data key and the encrypted object to S3. When we make the request for the object from the S3, so, so here is where we actually make the request data object to be downloaded. So if we make a request, what do we get from there? Yes, we will get the encrypted data key. Here you must ask yourself, what do we do with the encrypted data key? So look at the first half here. Look at the first half of the image here. So we take the customer master key, the encrypted data key, and we generate the plain text data key. Okay. And the second part that we have here. So once you get the plain text data key, what you do? You take the encrypted data using the encryption algorithm. You generate the data object. And that is where you get the plain text data key and the object that you wanted. And that's encryption and decryption for you.